as far as uh, digital initiative of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University is concerned, here is the lecture on VLSI technology having subject code KEC 053. I am your faculty Sangeeta Mangesh from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, JSS Academy of Technical Education, NOIDA. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to see uh, the technique which is known as thin film deposition techniques. Now, what is the content of the lecture include? The need for uh, such thin film deposition techniques in IC fabrication and what are the basic processes involved in thin film deposition. At the end of this lecture, as a student, I expect you to identify and relate the need for uh, thin film deposition and what is the need for such films in VLSI technology that is when you want to fabricate the integrated circuits and you should be able to explain different film deposition techniques and their plus and minus or pros and cons. Now, what is this film deposition technique? Now, you know already in most engineering uh, materials basically you have bulk material they have fixed properties like electrical resistivity, optical uh, what you call uh, optical opacity and other properties like, but when these materials are in bulk form their applications are limited. But when you reduce them into a or when you reduce them or their size gets reduced beyond certain uh, dimension their properties totally alter and that is why we are having something known as nanotechnology. You know already the material like best example is the water when you use it or if it is in a large quantity, it has a slippery tendency or every individual is likely to slip onto it, like when you step onto water which is lying onto the floor. But same water if you are using in a small quantity, it is using as sti sticking, it is used as a sticking property, it has got sticking property. So, for turning your pages normally, you use a small quantity of water and that same small quantity when it is, uh, it is giving you. Uh, rather than slippery, it is giving you uh, sticking like it has no ability to get stuck, stuck on. So, that means the properties are totally changing. So, that is how in case of bulk also you have bulk material having different properties and when you deposit them in the form of films, they will exhibit totally different properties and same behavior is being explored. This is called as basically size effect and this particular exp uh, process or this particular property is being explored in case of device fabrications which is adding you flexibility in designing the devices and you are getting the desired properties from the uh, devices by making use of this particular sizing properties. You can have such properties incorporated in device designing and you can have versatility in the applications. These devices will occupy less space, the fabrication uh, will require less material and thereby can be a cost effective solution. Now, what are these films? What are the materials which are being deposited in the form of thin films? So, one of the material is semiconductor. Now, semiconductor material we have seen already silicon getting deposited onto silicon, we have seen the epitaxial layer growth. So, basically when you are growing silicon onto silicon, we call it as a, like say, epitaxial growth we saw, a, a homo epitaxy like same uh, crystal structure like same crystal orientation, crystal structure same property of the uh, layer is to be inherited, then we go for epitaxial growth. So, we have seen one kind of deposition which is known as film, uh, film deposition or uh, over, uh, growing the layer or uh, uh, carrying out the growth process we have seen as epitaxy. Apart from it, you have a uh, metals getting deposited for interconnects getting uh, deposited for contact pads and establishing contacts in between the two metallization layer also if you want to establish contacts. So, you have metals such as aluminum, copper, platinum, gold, silver and different metal alloys which have been deposited. Another is polysilicon, it is also used as a gate material till 1970s it was very well used as a gate material after that it was replaced with some other materials. So, this is also polycrystalline silicon because it, uh, it has totally different properties as compared to your bulk silicon. So, that is also being used or explored in device fabrication. Third is you have special materials. Now, what are these special materials? You have polyphosphazine. Uh, now, this is basically a material which is used for super capacitor, trench capacitors. When you want to create uh, super capacitors or trench capacitors, we have this particular material being used. 
then you have something known as strontium based material or barium strontium based uh, titanate material which are basically high k materials and these high k materials or high dielectric strength materials are very well used for nanoscale devices for basically gate contacts and this is what is essential thing as far as miniaturized or nanoscale devices is concerned so whenever you want to have okay whenever you want to have these materials to be deposited or these thin films to be deposited you have the technique specific technique to be adopted these films definitely serve as i told you ohmic contacts they serve as gate contacts they serve as interconnects they serve as diffusion barriers as we have seen in etching the thin layer of silicon nitride will work as a uh, stopping or etch, etch, etching stopper if you have that layer till then the till the, the above that whatever is the material it will get etched away below that the, the etching will automatically stop the moment the silicon nitride layer arise, uh, arrives over uh, within that particular pit so this is also one of the technique so we have diffusion barriers trench capacitors planarization isolation implants and annealing so these are various applications where you need uh, thin films to be deposited now what are these thin films made up of so polycrystalline silicon or polysilicon are diff having different applications now these applications include gate electrode in the mos devices conducting material in multi level metallizations contact material for device junctions doped or undoped silicon dioxide that is sio2 can be used as insulation between the two conducting layers if you are having multi level metallization you have the uh, isolation can be done or proper insulation can be done between the two metal layers using silicon dioxide layer you can have diffusion and ion implantation mask they can be used as okay for diffusion and ion implantation as a mask you do not want to protect the other layers you will have silicon dioxide deposition you have diffusion sources similarly you can use it for capping the doped films to prevent the dopant losses it can be also used for gathering the impurities or for sur surface passivation to protect the surface you can use kind of from moisture and other impurities or uh, uh, further oxidation you can make use of this particular doped and undoped silicon dioxide stoichiometry or plasma deposited silicon nitride can be used for uh, barrier for uh, so, uh, to sodium diffusion it is nearly imper uh, impervious to moisture and has very low oxidation rate it prevents okay it prevents very well i told you already it, like in case of etching also silicon nitride is used as stopping layer for etching to prevent further etching this is the technique which is also used for local oxidation it is also used for local oxidation to have a typical profile or uh, to create or a typical profile that is to be created where you want the oxidation to be carried out uh, in a particular area only so this silicon nitride will be used and uh, you will have the pattern which will which we will uh, prevent the underlying so this is what is the technique where we apply or these are the applications of your thin films stoichiometric plasma deposited uh, silicon nitride is also used as a dielectric for d uh, rams and uh, mos capacitors when in combined with silicon dioxide they are also used for surface or stopping stopping layer in the etching process or they can use for surface like for uh, passivation surface passivation also they have been used the expected of these uh, like what is the property that is expected from these films these films are supposed to have good reproducibility they should be having good appropriate thickness they should have ability to get deposited with appropriate thickness thin thicknesses you require or thick thicknesses whatever you want you should be able to achieve that uniformity adhesivity they should have good composition integrity they should have minimum stresses reliability to enhance the reliability they should have purity and when you are using suppose you are using wafers now wafers are having of 18 inches dimension and there are so many devices getting fabricated with that 18 inch wafer till now you were having 10 inches or 12 inches wafer okay 12 inches wafer now you are going for 18 inches wafer so such a large dimension diameter wafer if it is used or being exposed to film deposition at every device which is fabricated on that 18 inch wafer should have same 
layer or same property with which the film has to be deposited. So, what are the major techniques of film deposition? So, first technique is physical vapor deposition in which you are having uh, thermal uh, evaporation of the material and you are having the deposition of those species onto the sur surface. Then you have something known as RF sputtering. Another technique is chemical vapor deposition and other technique apart from it there is like source contains the material which is to be deposited and you get very good quality films using chemical vapor deposition. The other techniques are electroplating, spin casting and epitaxial. So, epitaxial we have already studied that is same layer epi growth. So, whatever is the layer which is same layer is replicated on the top and that is what is we have seen already that is called as epitaxial. But in this lecture we are going to study or we are mainly fo focusing on the physical vapor deposition and here is the technique. Now, this physical vapor deposition chamber as we have seen in the epitaxial uh, growth process itself, the design of the furnace, design of the what you call uh, equipment is cautiously done and lot of chemistry, mathematical calculation has gone into it, the way in which the flow has to be, the way in which the deposition has to be. So, all those things have gone into it and that is how the cylindrical chamber is being designed. Now, this cylindrical chamber is comprising of okay this is it is basically used for physical physical vapor deposition as the name suggests it is a physical deposition of the material in the vapor form. Now, this technique is popularly used for metals and the materials which is to be deposited is placed in the inert crucible. Now, this inert crucible okay, the pressure inside the chamber is 10 raise to the power minus 6 to minus 7 torr. The crucible is then heated using the tungsten filament or electron beam to flash and evaporate the material. Now, once the material evaporates, the evaporation, okay, the evaporated material is allowed to flow or reach to the wafer surface along with the inert gas flow. Now, when it reaches over there, your wafer surface is cool. So, naturally this heated material will get condensed and form a layer onto the wafer surface. So, similarly the deposition rate will be moderate to fast and there would not be any damage to the substrate because it is a shear process of condensation happening. This is simple vapor deposition. So, in the form of vapor you have converted the material which is to be deposited allowed it to flow onto the wafer surface and then thereby it is getting allowed to get deposited. Another technique or improvisation of the same technique is basically a plasma assisted technique wherein the species are again converted into gaseous form accelerated into the plasma chamber and now here also you are having RF ok. You are you having uh, like you create a plasma by discharge of neutral gas such as helium or argon and the accelerated ions via the potential gradient and the bombardment of the target or cathode through momentum transfer of atoms near the surface of the target metal, they become volatile and are transported as vapors to a surface substrate. Now, please understand it is the same technique, it is same technique which was we were using for etching also, but in case of etching we were bombarding it in such a manner with such a high energy that energy was getting uh, imparted to the material which is deposited ok. The deposited material was impinged and getting dislodged and getting dislodged whereas, here it is opposite. What is happening is you are allowing that material to get deposited onto the targeted area. With the same technique it is like in earlier technique like in the last lecture when I taught you about the dry etching, dry physical etching. I told you the plasma is basically assisting you to impinge those particles onto the substrate, but here it is the opposite way. The energy is just sufficient so that the materials get deposited or the particles get deposited onto the film and the film grows at the surface via deposition. Now, please understand the difference 
earlier films what we have seen that is epitaxial is the replica of this particular thing and silicon dioxide or silicon nitride when we were think, uh, taking into a consideration the uh, bottom like whatever bottom layer of silicon was that was that was basically the building block or that was basically getting used to build up the uh, subsequent films or subsequent silicon we have already studied that silicon dioxide whenever from, uh, forms if one unit of silicon dioxide is to be formed it will eat away 0.44 d of silicon and then grow 0.6 d of uh, uh, silicon dioxide will grow onto it and thereby you will have one uh, unit thickness but in this case you don't have such kind of facility the deposition is only on the substrate that too in few micrometer thicknesses layers so you are no you are not having no what you call you don't have that uh, what you call flexibility or you don't have any provisioning there whereby you can uh, allow that silicon to get consumed and the film can grow so this is not the technique where we are exploring such kind of facilities so here the film deposition is only film getting deposited onto the surface you don't want the silicon to get con consumed you don't want the uh, original surface to get hampered and that is why the adhesivity is very very important in this case and this is how when the condensation happens the film will grow onto it the energy imparted will be very precise and thereby you will have very good layer of deposited film onto it for ions this is the same thing what i discussed the ion sputtering in case of ion sputtering the source material is put on the cathode for sputter deposition the substrate to be coated are on the anode the target at a high native potential is bombarded with positive argon ions created in the high density plasma now please understand the source material is put on the cathode cathode and for sputter deposition and the substrates are coat okay our substrate are Put, put or coated or placed onto the anode and therefore you will have deposition or resultant into like that particular the sputtering yield is average number of atoms ejected from the target as uh, per incident ion and the sputter yield that is the outcome of this particular sputter that is your sputtering means you are allowing the material to go and reside onto the wafer surface so by atom by atom the material is coming and residing onto the surface earlier same sputtering was high energy particles it was they were high energy particles they were striking the surface and they were dislodging it now we are not concerned about the dislodging technique we want the atoms to go and reside onto the substrate so the energy what is with which they are being uh, deposited that is why we are having they are put on the cathode and uh, for sputter deposition and the substrates are coated uh, to be coated uh, substrates to be coated are placed on the anode thereby there will be automatic deposition happening now the overall process depends on what is the tilt angle the average energy of each ion that is getting deposited the masses of ions and the targeted atoms the surface winding energy of the atoms in the target the surface binding energy with which they are getting deposited the binding energy which is required for proper layering of the that those species onto the wafer surface the advantage of such technique is okay please understand in physical vapor deposition we were condens there was condensation happening and the layer was getting formed the the advantage of this sputtering technique but there was like you have uniformity no surface damage but then there were some plus and minus points so we are going to see them in case of evaporation you don't have that much adhesivity whereas here you are imparting the energy adequate enough to go and reside onto the surface so naturally you will have good okay uh, in case of your, here you will have good layer formation and good adhesivity also in case of uh, sputtering you have wide choice of choice of material whereas in physical uh, uh, evaporation you have limited material because material has to have low boiling point, like melting point so that can get converted into vapors and then subsequently can flow through along with the or can be allowed to flow through your uh, uh, or can be injected into the furnace along with the inert gas whereas here you have got wide cho wide choices of the material in fact alloys also can be used better adhesion adhesive because the energy is just adequate enough 
complex stoichiometries are also possible you can have orientations angular uh, directions can be maintained films can be deposited over the larger wafers you can scale the process as a whole you can scale the process as a whole you, if you want to have i told you already if you have 18 inch wafer and you want to scale the process on a larger scale you want to scale the process on a larger area also you can carry out that sputter yield depends upon the number of atoms removed per incident ion of course the ion will or the energy it will depend upon the energy the tilt angle the mass all those properties then deposition rate is proportional to the yield of the given plasma energy and the yield we have seen the yield overall sputtering yield depends upon the incident angle the energy of the ion the masses of the ion and the targeted atoms how much is the overall mass of that particular area is how many how many atoms are required to what you call suppose i want to deposit the layer into this particular area so what is that overall area is what is the activation energy of the underlying film or underlying surface suppose the uh, species which are underlying are highly energy uh, energetic or uh, very high energy particles are there then you need to be cautious enough because when you are like uh, depositing the layer the properties of the electrical properties of this uh, this layer should not be hampered should not be altered so you have to take lot of precaution lot of care so that is also very very essential so surface binding energy of the atoms and okay atoms in the target so how much is the binding energy for the this is the target where you are that particular material is going and reside so what is the binding energy required so that it can form a proper adhesive layer or good uh, layer with good adhesion onto the wafer surface so we have seen the advantages so there is improvised version of the same technique which is known as magnetron rf sputtering now in this case what is being done a uh, use of magnetic okay uh, field is being used to further make the anode negative or further uh, have the electron confinement you have okay you have dielectric okay basically it is used for dielectrics and insulators you have high ionization which can be on low pressure sputtering can be done and you can have high purity of material can be attained now what is being done you have a magnetron cathode and this magnetron cathode will provide just adequate energy it will have uh, what you call binding energy which is just adequate enough you have better control on the energy with the help of additional magnetic field which is applied to this particular cathode now when you are having shielding okay when you are having this cathode shielding i told you already there is okay you have a gas shower head you have a plasma you have regular monitoring of the thickness of the layer also you are rotating the uh, surface also substrate also the where the target is being held that particular area you are rotating so that there is uniformity being maintained okay so have uniformity you are rotating it and you have view point to monitor it and this is what is the advanced technique where you are using additional magnetron or you are using additional magnetic uh, field to have proper control onto the ion energy now coarse sputtering is also used in this case you can make use of coarse sputtering where you can have more than one atoms or one species or the layer suppose you want to deposit gallium arsenide so you can have species of gallium along with arsenide both can be combined and together they can form or they can get deposited as a gallium arsenide layer so this is what is basically just an example i am quoting so this is what is coarse sputtering is also possible in case of so composition can be controlled by the power of the individual targets so you will control individual targets and you can have substrate rotation so that you have uniform layer getting deposited now if you want doped suppose p type gallium arsenide you want you have ability to introduce dopant also into it so that you can have coarse sputtering along with the dopant species so n type gallium arsenide layer can also be deposited so or you want copper and suppose aluminum alloy as a metallization layer you want to deposit basically such species are normally used for we have seen the dielectric and insulators but suppose you want high quality metallization films also under such situations also if you want alloys which are to be deposited so under those cases we can have alloys such as copper and aluminum those can be allowed to get deposited in a precise area using such kind of techniques now the comparison 
we have seen two physical deposition techniques, two techniques where we are depositing atoms physically onto the surface. So, we are picking up like basically it is one atom by atom you are depositing or uh, species are individually getting deposited onto the wafer surface to form a thin film. Now, there are these two techniques include I said if like thermal evaporation or basically elevated temperature you are evaporating the species allow uh, allowing them to flow and get deposited on the target or you are using a sputtering technique with plasma assisted which is a plasma assisted technique. So, what is the H rate in this case you have evaporation very good H rate of 100 okay, or 1000 atomic layer they call it per second and but here you cannot have thickness control. In this case you have got very good thickness control you have atomic layer atom by atom you are able to control. So, you have got very good thickness control. Choice of material in case of evaporation you have limited choice you need low melting point so that material can get evaporated easily whereas here you have unlimited choice of material. Purity in this case you have better purity because you are with along with inert gas you are allowing it and get deposited. Here you have possibility of contamination because you are using plasma and the, even if there is slightest change in the what you call uh, species which are travel, uh, traveling to the or pla in, in plasma they are high energy particles. So, those high energy particles there is a possibility that there can be what you call uh, slight like though there it is very minimum, but there is to some extent possibility of contamination into the chamber. Here you have no control on the alloy. So, co sputtering is possible over here you can have tightly controlled alloys you can compose like have composite uh, co sputtering possible whereas, here you do cannot have you have very little or as as as, 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 as of almost negligible possibility that you can have alloy composition happening. Change in the source material is very easy you can just remove the material clean the furnace again use another material deposit the second layer, but here it is not possible because you are using uh, plasma chamber high, uh, vacuumized chamber and therefore, this is slightly difficult. Decomposition of material is very high whereas, here it is very low. The adhesion I told you many times since it is simple condensation at a high elevated temperature wafer being uh, put uh, at, at comparatively low temperature. So, adhesivity many times can get compromised whereas, here since the uh, energy of the material or energy of the ato atomic layer which is getting deposited is totally controlled you have got very good adhesion. So, at the end before we end let us before we like uh, let us summarize and try to answer these questions. What is the role of metal uh, what you call metals dielectrics and polysilicon in the form of films uh, in IC fabrication. So, what are the films made up of basically metal dielectric and polysilicon function what are their applications in the IC uh, fabrication that you should be able to answer. What is the need schema like you are expected to know the schematic of the sputtering technique as well as uh, physical vapor deposition technique. Uh, and you should be able to compare the plus and minus points or pros and cons of both the techniques. So, that you should be able to suitably select the technique when you are asked to do so. So, if you are thorough with this thank you God bless and good luck.